To improve Montego Bay as a tourist destination, and four, to improve the general economy of Montego Bay. I am sure the question in your mind is why Mobe Pride? How did you come about with that name? The name Mobe is obvious because it concentrates on Mobe. But the name Pride might be puzzling. The P in Pride is for people. The R is for responding. The I is for N. The D for developing and the E for economy. And when we put them together, abbreviated, that's pride. People responding in developing the economy. I once went to a, a show in a nightclub and when the MC got an applause like the one you gave me he said thanks for the very sympathetic applause <laughs> thanks for the very sympathetic applause <laughs> having done better I'll tell you who are the people behind this The people behind Mobe Pride are, and as I call the names, I would like them to stand, remain standing, and would you hold your applause until I have named all of them, and then you may sympathize with them. <laughs> Mr. Noel Slowly, I have a disadvantage up here because of the lights I cannot see who is standing, but I assume he is. Mr. Winston Watt, Mr. Winston Deere, Mr. Jim Delgado, Mrs. Lolita McGann, Mr. Andrew Dadlani, Mr. Ian Robinson, 
Mr. Lee Bailey and the person who is standing up here, Godfrey Dyer, that's the committee. You may take your seat, ladies and, lady and gentlemen. These are the members of the steering committee, and I am the chairman of this committee. I want to say thanks to the hardworking team who has worked tirelessly since the birth of this idea some three weeks ago. It is though the effort of this team, it is through the effort of this team why we are having this successful launching tonight. And I must tell you that the dinner we are about to have, and that some of you have started having, is through the courtesies of Mr. Ian Robinson, general manager of the Wyndham Hotel. and Mrs. Ball, the Honorable Dr. Mark Brown, Minister of State for Tourism, and Mrs. Brown, Mr. Winston Deere, President of the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and Mrs. Deere, members of Parliament, Jeff Roach, and Keith Russell and Mrs. Russell, Senator Charles Sinclair, and Mrs. Sinclair, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. People responding in developing the economy, Montego Bay pride was born out of grave concern for a city that is crying out for help. It is out of this concern that the objectives that I mentioned before in my introduction were set. And I'll repeat, to unify the Montego Bay private sector. And of the objectives, I must tell you, that is one of the greatest ones. Because without unity, we are not going to be able to achieve anything. Number two, to create a greater degree of civic pride among all our citizens. Three, to improve Montego Bay as a tourist destination. And four, to improve the general economy of Montego Bay. Montego Bay is the largest resort area in Jamaica and can remain so if we awake from our slumber and correct the ills that beset us. The citizens of Montego Bay have a vested interest in Montego Bay's success. It is a fundamental part of our plan that the program must be successful, both in implementation and improvement, and in mobilizing support of all Montego Bay citizens, whether they be business persons, professionals, skilled or unskilled. You may tell me, ladies and gentlemen, that this is not the first time a project of this kind has been attempted for this city. I will say yes. We are very much aware. And this is 
therefore the very reason why there has to be a major difference. We think the difference is broad community participation. On previous occasions, there has been very strong personality components of the projects. For example, citizens were usually asked to support an organization. This time we are asking you to support an idea, a better city. It is for this reason that everything that will be said or done in relation to this civic program, the focus will be on accomplishment of tasks. That is not to say that individual roles in aiding and accomplishment will not be mentioned. Credit will be given where due. But that credit will only be given in the context of a job done. To put it in proper perspective, it will be recognition through works. It is on this theme, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to highlight some of the projects Mobile Pride has already undertaken. You would have noticed the pedestrian crossings from city center to Sam Sharp Square in Montego Bay have been completely painted. I certainly would like to say thanks to Mr. Lee Bailey for showing his pride on that project. Those of us who drove on Howard Cook Boulevard up to three days ago know that it was totally impossible to escape falling into the many potholes that were on that boulevard. I am pleased to tell you that through the intervention of Mobe Pride, every one of those potholes was filled by Miss Lucy Liu, General Manager of Seawind Beach Resort. Everyone, I'm sure, would easily agree that one of the filthiest areas of Montego Bay is the North Gully. I am pleased to tell you that Mobe Pride intervened and work started on Monday of this week to clean up North Gully. <laughs> this gully would have been completely cleaned by now if it were not stopped by the resident magistrate's court <laughs> because of the noise that was being made by the tractor. We have therefore suspended operation until this coming weekend, when the North Gully will be completely cleaned. I am very pleased and happy to tell you that the truck to use in, in the cleanup was given by Mr. Ian Robinson, the general manager of the Wyndham Rose Hall Hotel. Mr. Robinson, we thank you very much for showing your pride. The bridge in North Gully was painted. The city center building was also painted. Thanks again to the very energetic Mr. Lee Bailey. Ladies and gentlemen, this is but the beginning. It is our determination that Montego Bay must be the cleanest city, not only in Jamaica, but in the entire Caribbean. <laughs> 
we have many projects to be undertaken. And I'll just name a few. Cleaning up of Sam Shop Square on all the adjacent streets. We'll in, we will initiate paint up and refurbishing of the exterior of all buildings around the square and adjacent streets. We will install flower boxes along major streets leading from Sam Shop Square. We will clean up the Montego Bay Cross Market and beautify with plants. We are going to repair, clean up, and maintain in good order public sanitary conveniences in downtown Montego Bay, including those at the Cross Market. And the key word here is maintain. We have no intention of just doing a program and leaving it at that. We will continue to do it. We will repair and maintain main roads leading from the pier to the city center. We will implement installation of public telephones in strategic locations. We will beautify main roads leading from Rose Hall to the city of Montego Bay and from Bogue to the city of Montego Bay. We will create notice, public notice boards for the use of, by promoters and others. And these, I'm sure, will reduce the handbills that are pasted all, all over the city. And at this stage, I must I must say thanks to the government for introducing this anti-litter bill. It is timely with our project. These, ladies and gentlemen, are but few of the many projects to be undertaken. We will have citizenship awareness programs to educate and inform the citizens of Montego Bay through schools, churches, public communications, and any other appropriate means of the objectives of civic improvement programs, Montego Bay Pride. And what it means to them individually and collectively. Mobe Pride will be administered by an executive committee with an operations manager who will be responsible for the implementation of projects. I am also pleased to announce that Mr. Tim Nurse of Pricewaterhouse has agreed to volunteer his service to audit Mobe Pride's account. The reason for this, we don't want that later on tonight when you have pledged your 50,000 and your 100,000, that we are not able to account for it. We want to be accountable, and we decided that we would select a volunteer from one of these outstanding audit firms. The executive committee will comprise of representatives from existing civic groups, the Montego Bay chapter of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, the Craft Vendors Association, the Montego Bay Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the merchants, the banking institution, the community, churches, schools, the media. We have also retained the services of an outstanding public relations firm. The reason is we mean business. 
CGR Communications as our public relations consultants. And I must say thanks for the counsel Mr. Adrian Robinson has given us so far. With all the will in the world, ladies and gentlemen, all that I have said can only be possible if we have the funds to do it. This is going to take a lot of money to maintain these projects on an ongoing basis. And I tell you, I would not be party to this committee if it were not an ongoing project. Therefore, it is this reason we are here tonight. To get your moral and financial support and in a few minutes from now, we'll be asking for your generous pledges. And although I say pledges, in moving around and talking, a few people who got hint came with their check leaves. We will accept the checks. I would also like to remind you that as you give your support this evening, both moral and financial, it is not mere giving. It is investing for the future of all of us. Because if Montego Bay fails, we all fail. And therefore, if it prospers, the prosperity will be all ours. Ladies and gentlemen, we are too proud to fail. Let us prove to the outside world that we are a people responding in developing our economy. Thank you. Working very hard on and I am happy to tell you that funding has been found to assist you in fixing that up. Am I right, Mr. Watt? So the public sector is prepared to try to do what they can as well to assist you in that. But I think it's very important to us to, to know that more and more ships would like to be based in Montego Bay. We had two based here last winter for the first time in our history. And those two ships were responsible for an extra 20 million US dollars, which I think is nothing to be sneezed at. And this, this winter, a third ship is coming to be based here in Montego Bay. And I quite agree with you that if we are going to base them here and they look at what we have just seen, I don't think they're going to stay with us too long. As a matter of fact, I don't even think there's any cruise ship right at the moment coming into Montego Bay on a regular basis. We are trying to change that, but as you know, the cruise ship business is a little different. It takes a year or two for them to make up their minds to come back into a port. So I think that this is one area that we can really make some strides forward. But all in all, the idea is extremely good. And I'm not supposed to, I promise not to say it, but since I discussed it with my minister, I can say it that we are prepared to put matching fund to yours. <laughs> But, 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 of course, you know, our funds are limited, not like yours. <laughs> 
Well, I knew I had the support. This is why I made sure to have Dr. speak. I have the mind that the time has come when the heart itself must change. And therefore, it's not the partisan approach to a problem, but the unity that is necessary. I endorse the effort, and I'm sure that we are going to be successful. Of necessity, not only those people with lots of funds and affluence and plenty, but all of us, we the poorer ones, <laughs> We'll have to give our hearts as well as our hands. And you can be assured that although my muscles are not as strong as in the past, I'll do all I can. Thank you very much for allowing me to endorse this. Member of Parliament in whose area the city falls, Honorable Dr. Ken Ball, to say a few words to us. At this stage, may I invite you, doctor, just to say a few words to us. Thank you, sir. We are seeing what is a resurgence of pride and a recognition of the necessity for self-effort. That there is no godfather, no Ronald Reagan, no prime minister, and no government that can do the job that we have to do for ourselves. I would just like to make the observation that in all my searching since I've been a member of government and all my travels, I have come across no country that have been outstanding in their development, and there are many such examples, where a keen attention to cleanliness, to their institutions, to parks and gardens is not a pillar of their achievement. As a matter of fact, it is a reflection of a self-esteem in which we hold ourselves. And it is part of a criteria on the basis of which we are judged as a nation in a state of readiness for development and for investment. I don't know which is the chicken and the egg, but all I know is that cleanliness and beauty and development are married together and cannot do one without the other. We are in competition. I want you to recognize this. Not only internationally, but internally in Jamaica. And it is a healthy competition. And we have to accept the challenge. To date, we have not. And we are on the decline while others are growing. The outstanding example is Ocho Rios. And they have long had a tourism protection committee, among others, that have been doing a splendid job. We have heard of Port Antonio cleaning itself. And if we are to assess our seriousness or our future in tourism as compared to others, and if we pay attention to recent news, then it would mean also that May Penn is ahead of Montego Bay. But I'd just like to remind you that, in the words of one of our visitors recently, an outstanding visitor, the astronaut, Dr. Ronald McNair, who said he was mesmerized on his voyage to outer space by the beauty of the world, also said that next to that, he's found more, more Montego Bay comparable. And I guess that we have to recognize that we have the natural resource, what we need is the people power. And we have recognized this for a long time. All of us have been conscious of the need. And as the chairman said, there have been efforts before. But I believe that now is the time, and I really feel that I'm seeing something that is tangible and objective and intends to succeed. And I really appreciate the leadership that we've seen demonstrated tonight by the chairman. I really appreciate the fact that there are tremendous amount of work has gone into it already, and there has already been some, some success. But I would like also to commend all those others who have spent a lot of time working on this program, making it a reality, not something that is light or superficial, but something that is meaningful, which has the value of appeal 
to our local investors and our investors from Kingston. Committee of the, of the Chamber of Commerce, in their enthusiasm and in their interest to do something about the North Gully. And I've also had the privilege of meeting with the subcommittee of the Chamber of Commerce on cruise ship operations and tourism. And in particular, I would like to thank the Delgados, both Camille and Jim, for their own input, because they have made it their business to assist and to support in a tremendous way, and to make certain that all the groundwork has been done successfully. <laughs> they say good things come from Puerto Rico. I know about Bacardi, but I've just learned about Jim Delgado. And just in closing, for all of us to recognize, and I'm supporting the chairman in this, that in fact, the efforts we make now, whether it is the hands on heart of Mr. Howard Cook, or the moral support that I'm giving, or the cash from the investors locally and from Kingston, all of it is an investment in our future. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm privileged to be here. I give you my full support, and I thank you very much. We thank you very much, Doctor. Are elected by us. The government are funded by our taxes. The government have a responsibility to supply the social services which we require to run a society in which we can live and in which we can have social harmony. But it is up to us the citizens of the country to create wealth by our efforts so that the government can be funded. We have not seen over the last 20 years the level of growth that we could have seen. The fault does not lie only with the politicians. It does not lie only with the political climate, it lies within ourselves as individuals. And the private sector, I believe, has got a challenge which is at least as great as any challenge which any government has faced since we have become an independent nation. If we do not believe in ourselves, we will not succeed. And I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of the private sector to salute the proud citizens of Montego Bay and to wish you well. You have our support from the private sector in our, your dealings in every area. We are ready and willing to assist you in whatever way we can. Like yourselves, at this stage, the private sector is not a wealthy organization, but we will give you the support to the best of our ability. I thank you very much for having invited me. First of all, I have a proxy. And that proxy comes from someone who does not do business in Montego Bay. It's a $5,000 pledge from the Vice President and General Manager, Gary Dudley, of Alcoa, Jamaica. And the Joneses have pledged $10,000. I guess I have no choice but to match their pledge with my companies, Rose Hall Limited and Rose Hall Developments Limited of $10,000. And I also challenge the Joneses and Mr. Deswani, if they'd like to pledge a little bit more, I might be willing with my companies to pledge a little bit more also. <laughs> Thank you. And it's a group of companies, including, including Seawin Beach Resort. I'd like to pledge $10,000 to this excellent cause. Thank you very much. Limited, we pledge $10,010. <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we need the pledges. On behalf of Tropical Tours Limited, I would like to pledge $10,000. To Montego Bay, we think this is an excellent cause. We would like to see this town be the most beautiful place in Montego Bay. And on behalf of Fraser Fontaine and Kong, I'd like to pledge $10,000. Thank you very, very much, sir. And that's from the Challenger Line people. I mean, the $10,000. It's a, <laughs> you know, I am very privileged to be here as chairman tonight because it's the first I've held a check this large in my hand. <laughs> very privileged. Thank you very, very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we have 600 staff here at the Wyndham Rose Hall Hotel. We have 600 very proud staff here at the Wyndham Rose Hall. And on their behalf, I pledge $15,000. One omission, I know there are two managers of other hotels here present tonight, Mr. David Roper. <laughs> Mr. Dyer may be scared of naming names, I don't, don't quite follow suit, and Mr. Franz Eichenau and I challenge them to come up and do something about something that we really believe in, okay? <laughs> not that I would not want to, but put it into the hands of more capable people. Uh, Mr. Roper, I know you want to come up. I really realize that. You, you can't make up your mind how much? <laughs> All right, we understand. And it's safe. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it was so rewarding to me to hear $10,000 pledge tropical tours. I'm going to match that. In terms of the Jamaica Association of Tour Operators, tropical tour is a part of it, $10,000. Now, I'm a small company, and I'm also going to put $2,500 for Jamaica tours. I don't want people in the audience to be intimidated with these big figures. Please, $500 can help. $200 can help. $50 can help. You're hearing the big figures? Don't let it scare you. Give your little bit. Moby pride is what we're dealing with. Don't let the big man them intimidate you. It's your tone. Is your place. You have to live here and deal with it. God bless you. And Mr. Clark is coming up. I don't know which of the companies he's going to pledge from. No, no. <laughs> um, I'm not in a position to pledge for Life of Jamaica itself. But on behalf of the Monte Bay branch, I'm pledging you $1,000. Thank you very much. <laughs> I, must, I must further say that um, I, would, I, I would suggest to you that you get in touch with Mr. Foreman. Because recently he was down here and he spoke about all the matters to which we referred to a while ago. And I'm sure that you'll get a substantial pledge from Mr. Foreman. One thousand for Montego. Thank you very much. We actually invited him here tonight. But because of our engagement, he couldn't. Extra Limited, I pledge $15,000. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. So on behalf of myself and my wife, Camille, we'd like to pledge our personal, not corporate, but our personal $1,000. Then I have another proxy from Bill Schwant, Marguerite's, $1,000. And then since Challenge Airlines is in the audience, I'd like to offer a challenge for everybody who has 
pledged $10,000. And as I see it, that's Challenge Airlines, that's Alan Daswani, that's uh, Indru Daswani, uh, Dadlani, excuse me, that's Mobe Freeport, that's Tropical Tours. And if they come up with a little bit more, Rose Hall and Rep Jamaica, if they come up with a little bit more, Rose Hall Developments Limited and Rose Hall Limited might be urged to come up with a little bit more also. Thank you. A little bit more will be coming up. The Financial Services Limited, 10,000 Jamaican dollars. And on behalf of a client of mine who wished to remain anonymous, 10,000 US dollars. Well, I don't feel I can be outdone either with um, Ian just coming up here. I also pledge $1,000. Thank you very much, Mr. Winston, dear. This is a new one. K. Shandaram Limited. A 51 St. James Street, right on the bridge, I think. Close to the bridge. $12,000. Thank you very much, sir. That's the figure I have in mind. It's probably appropriate at this time. Um, as the agent for the Britannis cruise ship and on behalf of the owners, Fantasy Cruises, Chandris Lines, and in demonstrating their commitment as part and parcel of your uh, efforts to improve the facilities here, I'd like to pledge $10,000 on behalf of Fantasy Cruises, Chandris Lines, and as mine is another poor company like Mr. Slowly's, I'll just match his at 2,500 from Holiday Host. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's the spirit. I'm here on behalf of Western Publishers Limited, the Visitor Vacation Guide, and the Western Mirror Newspapers. We do not have cash to pledge, but we have services to offer and we are willing to pledge $10,000 worth of advertising for Hogwarts. Thank you very much, Mrs. Robbins, because we need that. We definitely need that. And in Jamaica Limited. I have their telephone number also. $5,000. Mr. Ed. Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen, I'm making a pledge on behalf of Montego Bay Rotary Club. The amount will be announced after the directors meet. Now, it shows, it shows, it shows not only commitment, but involvement. Mrs. Mrs. Marco Brown, $1,000. Thank you. In Kingston and been away for 22 years and returned to Jamaica two years ago. I've now adopted Montego Bay as my hometown, and my wife and myself would like to donate personally $1,000. Charles and Mrs. Charles Sinclair, I'd like to pledge $1,000. Okay, young Charles. If I had my son here, I would send him up and pledge $1,000. Of $1,000. Thank you very much, Mr. Rob. That's the spirit. Thank you very much. She didn't want to tell you, she communicates through me. The first one, Mr. Bob Zivasa, whom I mentioned before, $500. And Mr. and Mrs. Addison, $1,000. Would you get a pledge card to Mrs. Addison, please? Mr. Slowly is coming up again for one of his other companies. Oh. <laughs> this is it. Jacaranda Fielding Avenue. It's a villa in Fielding Avenue. And the owner is Mr. Olasima, Emmanuel Elasima. 
Let me hope I pronounce it correctly. What I know I can pronounce correctly is his $500 in cash. I've got another proxy, someone who is not here with us tonight, but it's Tony Hart, who is off the island, would have liked to be here with us tonight and pledge his $10,000. Of Casamanola, $2,000. Denton and myself, we donate $500, and on behalf of the staff of Challenge International Airlines, $2,000. Our bank manager is right here. Thank you very much. Yeah, we, we want to hear a little more individual people coming up. Not just companies. We want the individual involvement. And whether it be $50, $25, $100, $100 or $100,000, what we are interested in tonight is the commitment. We have here Danny Tulani. $4,000. AP Security Limited, $5,000. Bring up the pledges. Move around, ladies. <laughs> Dr. Scave Beach Hotel. That's a lovely hotel. I think, I think it's the second loveliest hotel down at the strip there. $5,001. Bay Club Resort, $2,000. And now to Tona, who is doing very well in Montego Bay. We passed the 300000 Lovely. So... As I said, we're settling off at half a million, so we, we're making it. Appliance Traders and Carry Break, $10,000. Uh, it's a personal contribution of $1,111. <laughs> the uh, facilities of the Chamber of Commerce of Manteca Bay to support this venture, and you can be using our office space and our sec secretarial um, staff for the project. Thank you very much. Alliance are making a pledge of $8,000. I'd like to bring Shaman Scott, the mayor of our city, Montego Bay's first citizen up here for a moment. Why did I do it? <laughs> okay, see you. Uh, your worship? <laughs> I'll be your bodyguard. <laughs> yes. I think it's fitting that everybody here tonight, and I'd like to meet to have the mayor lead the effort, everybody here get a Mon a Mobe Pride button. Say a couple of things, baby. Say a couple of What's things. That? <laughs> I'd like to um, thank Adrian Robinson for that very interesting story about this man who was in court and pleaded guilty before the end of the trial. I'd just like to plead not guilty. <laughs> um, I just want to underscore the many comments by the previous speakers and to congratulate all those persons who are responsible for this very worthwhile effort. And um, we'd like to pledge our support from the parish council in whatever way we can assist. <laughs> 